Now, the conflict in Syria has been going on for the better part of a decade now, um, and it has evolved into something that does not resemble in any way, shape or form the conflict as it started um, around nine years ago now. Um, I think it might be controversial for me to say this, but I think I, I do have some kind of justification in saying this, that the Syrian opposition, um, as we remember it from nine years ago, um, is no longer what it was. In fact, you could say it's completely been taken out of the picture. Um, and now the conflict seems to be one between um, the Assad regime, um, the YPG forces uh, east of the Euphrates, which um, were originally backed by the Americans before they pulled out of Syria, and um, the Turkish-Russian slash Iranian cooperation that's taking place in northern Syria. Um, now, one interesting aspect that I want to focus on in this conflict um, that's been um, highlighted in the past month is the evolution of the conflict in Idlib. Now, um, at the end of February, um, there was a huge incident where um, a Russian airstrike killed dozens of Turkish soldiers. Now, these are two countries that are supposed to be working on the same side in the Syrian conflict in order to de-escalate the situation. Um, however, this incident um, pretty much highlighted the tensions, the underlying tensions um, in, and conflicting interests between Turkey and Russia in northern Syria. And this incident um, brought about an emergency meeting where the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan went to Moscow and had a meeting with his Russian counterpart uh, Vladimir Putin um, where they discussed ways in which they could renew and rejuvenate their cooperation in northern Syria. And the understanding um, that they came to in that meeting was that um, the Turks and the Russians were going to um, continue joint patrols along the M4 highway, which is a highway that connects um, the city of Aleppo with the city of um, Latakia, the coastal city of Latakia. Um, and that highway runs um, just on the outskirts of the city of Idlib, and it has in a way become a border between um, the Idlib region, which is still very much controlled by um, anti-Assad forces. Some of them, we could consider them Syrian opposition, um, which are being backed by Turkey. And some of them, um, either Al-Qaeda affiliated or formerly Al-Qaeda affiliated um, militant groups. Um, so Turkey has been tasked actually with um, clearing up the militant groups that are not part of um, the Turkish-Russian cooperation. So this has put Turkey in a very awkward situation. Now, um, we do know that there are some Syrian opposition elements that are loyal to Turkey. Turkey has formed an army in northern Syria. They are mobilizing that army. Um, it's a Syrian army. And this army um, pretty much carries out the uh, commands of, of Turkey um, in the region. But there is the most dominant group in Idlib is um, HTS. Now, HTS um, was formerly known as the Nusra Front. And it was very well known that the Nusra Front um, was an affiliate of Al-Qaeda in Syria. Now, while the Nusra Front um, was the Nusra Front, Turkey was making efforts in order to um, encourage them to split off from Al-Qaeda and join the mainstream Syrian opposition. Um, now, the Nusra Front um, at first resisted um, this this request um, because they were very heavily bound to Al Qaeda. But after a while, the the Nusra Front started to see the sense, um, the po the political sense it made for them to cut off from Al Qaeda, and um, basically uh, reformed their image as a Syrian opposition faction. However, they, they even though they did split up from Al-Qaeda, 
and they rebranded themselves. They cha they've changed their name twice since, and now they're known as HDS. Even though they have, um, at least on paper, they've split off from Al Qaeda. Um, they have failed to join the mainstream Syrian opposition, and in that region, at least, the mainstream Syrian opposition is now um, part of the the forces that Turkey is mobilizing. Um, so this HTS group um, has split off from Al-Qaeda and they are still fighting against the Assad regime um, but they are resisting joining um, forces loyal to Turkey. Now HTS has not sought out any direct confrontation with Turkey but the situation has come to such a, a um, point now that um, HTS is torn between... Um, its its role um, as a Syrian opposition faction independent of any other faction um, in the region or becoming um, part of a mainstream Syrian opposition which is going to uh, most likely be modelled after a secular uh, model which obviously goes against the, um, the intentions of why HTS is actually there in the region because HTS... Um, for better or worse, is there to establish some kind of um, Islamic system, or at least based on their interpretation of Islam. Um, now, this situation has brought about some kind of conflict between um, the Turkish-backed forces and HTS. HTS has been mobilizing um, civilians who are against the um, Turkish-Russian pact in Idlib, They've been mobilizing civilians to protest against the Turkish-Russian joint patrols on the M4 highway. Um, so this has brought about a situation where Turkey is in direct conflict with HTS, but HTS is trying to deflect and defer um, that conflict. And at the same time, Turkey as well, they don't want to um, get too involved in the conflict with HTS because it will be a distraction um Again, a, a distraction away from the conflict with the Assad regime and at the same time we have to acknowledge that the HTS faction is still very popular in Idlib so Turkey does not want to turn the population, the masses of Idlib um, against, against itself um, however HTS um, does not have everything under control from what it seems because um, the, the situation that HTS has been put in is causing many defections away from um, HTS. Now, HTS, when they split off from Al-Qaeda, um, they had to shed some skin. Um, uh, f because, for example, many groups um, who were still loyal to Al-Qaeda, um, the main one being Quras al-Din, um, translated into the guardians of, of the religion, um, they decided to split off from HTS. They decided not to make the transition away from Al-Qaeda. And, and Hurras al-Din are still very much um, operational as an Al-Qaeda proxy um, in northern Syria. And, he, and Hurras al-Din have not shied away from um, getting involved in direct conflicts um, with uh, Turkish backed forces and with Turkish forces themselves. Now, what HTS is trying to do is they're trying to mediate the situation in a way. So HTS is basically saying that, look, we don't want to join the um, Turkish-backed forces, but at the same time, we don't want anyone else to fight against the Turkish-backed forces. So HTS has actually been um, in conflict with Huras al -Din and similar groups to Huras al -Din, um, in order to in order to sideline them and subdue them um, to quell any kind of conflict um, in the region which would basically bring about the end of HTS um, itself because if it does become a, a, a huge conflict, if it does polarise um, the society even more then HTS is going to become irrelevant and those within HTS who are closer to um, the Turkish um, agenda in northern Syria will split off and join the Turkish backed forces whereas those who are closer to its uh, traditional roots in Al-Qaeda will split off and join groups like Huras al-Din. So it is a very complicated and a very delicate situation in northern Syria at the moment along that M4 highway.